Thanks so much for jumping in and joining us. Um, we've got a really, really great panel today. Um, let me get slided. Here we go. Um, so I'll introduce myself really quickly. Um, obviously, I know you guys on the panel, but for those out there that don't know me, uh, my name is Aaron Paris. I'm our EVP for Partner Success uh, and, and worked and lived on the college side for, for many years before coming aboard. So um, at several different universities. Uh, so my background is college. I've got I've kind of been in the shoes of, of almost each of you guys on the panel to a degree. Um, and then also, um, you know, many people here um, just listening in, but super excited uh, about this panel again. Um, Emily, Barb, Jason, if you guys wouldn't mind just running down sort of your background, your role and, and kind of what you oversee there at your respective universities. Yeah, um, I'm Emily Dent. I am the director of ticket operations here at the University of Kentucky. I've been in a variety of ticketing roles here for the past 15 years. I'll be starting my 16th year here this summer. Um, I started, my first job in ticketing was a little over 19 years ago at Rep Arena here in Lexington when I was in school. So I've been around Lexington for a while, um, but currently overseeing basically all the day-to-day -day operations in our office, oversee football, men's basketball game days, student ticketing, um, track and field, swim and dive, whole variety of things. So that's the college life, right? You oversee everything, anything and everything. Other um, duties as assigned. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Barb, can you give a little background on yourself too? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Barbara Sullivan, uh, Assistant AD of Marketing here at Notre Dame. Um, I oversee all of our strategic marketing for our four ticketed sports, and I primarily focus on digital and database marketing. Um, I've been here working in the digital marketing space for probably, I think, going on four years now. Worked at Ohio State for a year as a director of ops for their lacrosse team randomly. And then before that, I interned at Notre Dame as well. So um, very Notre Dame heavy here, but super excited to talk to everybody. Perfect. Thank you. Jason, last but not least, my man. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me today. Uh, Jason Malay, Associate AD for Revenue Generation and Fan Engagement here at the University of Tulsa, along with uh, overseeing marketing and ticket sales and a lot of our external functions. I'm also our Campus Director of Licensing, which will definitely play into some of what I present later on. So like AP was saying, wear a lot of different hats and get to do a lot of different things. But uh this is uh, finishing up my fifth year here at Tulsa. Prior to that, I was at the University of Northern Colorado, more in a sponsorship and ticket sales role. And prior to that, I was at Wichita State for four years in a uh, social media and marketing role. So happy to be here. Yeah, thank you guys so much. I think, you know, for those of you out there, I think you see, we, we, we tried to get a really panel, a panel with, with really broad um, strokes. So hopefully that'll allow us to, to speak across a lot of different languages and pieces. So um, Emily, let's start with you. Um, let, let's talk a little bit. I, I think, you know, for you specifically, or you and your team, of course, um, there at Kentucky, you guys were really, obviously, you're early on adopters to FIVO. Um, and I think from your perspective, I would love to hear about it, but you guys kind of dove in all the way in, right? I, I think a lot of times teams like, well, we'll use you for football or for basketball or for X, Y, or Z. You certainly do that, right? Um, but but you also, you know, as you can see here on the board, but like Olympic sports, um, you know, across the board, I think you guys have found a way to use us. Can you speak to kind of the data that you've seen there, um, how and why it's been successful or, or you know, different, different pieces and why you guys chose to use us across so many different sports and in so many different ways? Yeah, so we are not a huge operation here. There are six full-time people in our ticket office, and then we have a sales team of five, um, and the sales team has grown over the past couple of years, but we are not a huge operation, and we have seven sports that we take it regularly and five additional that we take it for postseason, along with countless other events that anybody on a campus understands that you have to accommodate at different times. Um, so anything that we could do to kind of make our lives a little bit easier and have less phone calls that we're dealing with, um, anything that we could do just to make our lives easier was exactly what we were looking to do. So we kind of went all in on everything from the start. We use it for mainly Olympic sports, but we also definitely use it for football and basketball, things like family weekend reunions, alumni events. 
Um, but Olympic sports, we use it a lot for our youth teams, club teams, churches, just different groups that want to attend those. And we're not having to worry about getting 20 different phone calls from 20 different parents of a youth team because they all want to buy youth team tickets. We're able to just get this link to them. They're able to go on there and purchase individually. The group leaders not having to collect their RSVPs, collect the money from parents. And it's just making everybody's lives a little bit easier. But being able to capture that information from them has been awesome for us. We're able to retarget them um, with other games throughout the season. We were able to retarget them through subscriptions for season tickets the next year. And then also we kind of do across different sports. Like if they come to a softball game, okay, maybe they're interested in other women's sports. So let's try gymnastics or volleyball, other things that are similar um, to kind of get them into other sports as well and get them connected that way. So it's been, it's been great for us, but being able to collect that information has been kind of a lifesaver, especially these past two years, and being able to communicate much better with the people that are actually attending, getting out campus COVID policies to people, knowing what the mask policy it is, is at venues, um, having the clear bag policy out there for them. We see a lot more people that are coming to events prepared, which I think in turn makes them have a better experience at those events. So that's been that's been huge for us is the communication with them and being able to retarget them with with so many other things too. Yeah, I love the way you put it because I mean I think you're right. It, it it's more important than ever in my opinion to have data on those who are attending your events for for revenue driving reasons, for communication reasons, and and to you to your point, you know, COVID related reasons. Hopefully, we're growing out of that, but. Um, I think historically, and, and when I was on the team side as well, you know, the Olympics, it's, it's a lot of walk up, right? And you're not collecting that data and, and you're losing out on that opportunity to market to them. So I think that's right. And then from my side, like making it easy for you, for your fans, et cetera. Um, you know, college in general, right? You don't have a hundred person sales team like, like some of the pro teams might. Um, so how can we make your time more efficient? So I love it. Yeah, um, and being able to collect that data. On oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say being able to collect that data has been huge for us, but also like this past year, we took an event, we host high school track and field meets, which are not the most enjoyable thing to host if anybody's ever had to do that. <laughs> um, but you end up with hundreds of high school kids coming and we were able to take a FIVO page, get it out there, get the link out there on the high school event meet page, and then also just post QR codes on doors on um, little flyers and A-frames outside. And we were able to take a several thousand dollar operation that was cash only and convert that to mainly all card, had very few walk up cash, but also we were then collecting their information too. So we're absolutely gonna use that information and that data we're collecting to retarget those people for when we're hosting college track meets here. Yeah, I mean, thinking outside, right? how do you find ways to collect more data, even on events that aren't probably top of line, top of mind for you guys? I think it's, it's really smart to, to leverage the tech, right? And make it super easy. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit of Family Weekend. I'll come back to you on this, Emily, but um, related to Family Weekend, and I think there's some folks from South Carolina on the call, so um, shout out to you guys for, for a tremendous job. But um, Family Weekends in general, right? It's, it's historically been difficult. It's been print three or four or five or 10,000, whatever many tickets take them across campus and maybe we'll figure out who's going, who's not maybe. And, and that's not campus's fault. They just haven't had that ability. Um, in South Carolina's case, and Emily, I'll ask for your take on this too, but um, these guys did a really, really good job, right? They were able to limit expenses. Um, they were able to push it out. 9,000 tickets sold for one game. Um, significantly increased that, right? 91% new names. We were just talking about data. How important is 23% conversion rate. Just so you guys know, if you're on the call and don't know this, the average conversion rate just across you know traditional ticketing platforms is in that two to three percent. Maybe you get four if you're really really pushing it. So twenty three percent is is outrageously high and it's outstanding. So um, shout out to these guys for doing it. I think the biggest piece probably to touch on Emily, you touched on this a little bit, is living on like your campus page, right? Because a lot of times that's the difficulty. You want to go and say, hey, I want to I want to make this digital so that you guys can collect the data, whatever. Um, you know, if they don't want to drive people necessarily to an athletics page, now you don't have to. And that, that's part of where I think we succeed really well with these. 
Emily, can you speak to yours more specific? But I, I want to show this yeah. slide just to, to talk through this as an example. Yeah, and we've we've also looked at South Carolina's for some some help with our pages too. Um, I think that's the biggest yeah. thing with ticketing. You look at what other people are doing, and if it's working, you want to do it too. Um, but we have a pretty good relationship with our parent association on campus, and we're able to use them to help get that information out there. But they're willing to put it on their page, put the button on there, and then also communicate it out in their emails that they send out. And they're pretty good at collecting parent information. Um, but before we were doing it, before we did it on FIVO, we were doing it just phone calls. And we were taking phone calls from parents because we wanted to be able to offer them a student rate ticket. And we didn't want to just put that out there online and then have them find a specified QR or specified code to get it. So we've had this link for the past, I don't know, what are we at now, Erin? Probably four or five years, five years now that we've done this. Um, and it's been huge for us, the amount of phone calls that we're not having to worry about with parents just needing to buy two tickets, one for them, one for their student. Um, and, and we're doing a little bit less than South Carolina. We're probably doing about seven, 8,000 for this through the link. And it's been great to be able to get that out there. Campus is willing to use it, use their resources also for us. So that's helpful. Um, if you can find anybody on your campus that's willing to do anything to help you with that, that's huge. Yeah, I think you nailed it again, though, right? Like if you were doing it via phone calls or whatever you were doing, saving yourselves time and energy, anybody in, in the college world knows you're understaffed almost always, right? Um, even at an SEC school like yourselves or other places, right? Barb, same thing. Um, as we transition to you, you guys are, are still limited in staff. So how can I take, how can you take time and, and interject it differently? So I love that. Thank you, Emily. Um, all right, Barb, we're going to transition to you a little bit. Um, so obviously a little bit different role uh, than Emily specifically, just related to kind of your responsibilities, what you're looking to do. Not to say you don't, you aren't very involved in revenue driving um, and working obviously with your ticket office and sales crew, but um, I, from, from, your trans, from your standpoint, excuse me, I, I want to kind of transition and look at it a little bit differently. Um, you and I have spoken offline, online, whatever, um, about features that you want to see, right? Features that mm -hmm. some of some that we've developed. Um, can you speak to sort of this is and for those on the call that haven't seen it, um, this is live today with a couple integrations. We're very close with the third. Um, can you speak kind of to why you think things like Google Pay, Apple Pay, or other features that that we're developing um, will be so impactful for you guys? Yeah, and I, and this immediately made me think of our. I work very closely with our Fighting Irish Media team. And what part of their mission statement is to inspire fans and future generations to forever engage in the Notre Dame experience. And I bring that up because there's an important part of future generations and especially at Notre Dame where our fan base leads towards the older side. We're constantly trying to think of new ways like how do we how do we get a new group of people in the door, how do we get them to experience Notre Dame and have a phenomenal experience while they're here. And I think these features help us get to that generation, get to that next step and help people when they see something, they buy it, especially two clicks on a phone, get, get that ticket right away without them having to think about it, um, I think really helps capture a new group of fans. Yeah, I love it. I, I, you nailed it on the, on the older, right? I mean, during my time in college, I'm seeing everybody on this panel say the same, like in general, the fan base is getting older. Probably a cross sport, but in the university sure. space specifically, your season ticket orders are certainly older. So how do we get more people in the building? Places like with you guys, right? I mean, it's such a huge atmosphere. Get people in there and then and hopefully you can transition them. So and you almost you that, want, and you want people to lean on the emotional response, I think, with a lot of our advertising mm -hmm. and our ads. We want to create emotion and have people feel something when they see them. And then if you have an opportunity to pull this up and it's a quick buy, that captures that attention span really quickly without having to go through sign in and all these different steps to get them. It's right away, we provide that emotion, they buy on that and then we go from there. Yeah, and you guys have even, like when with the new college, with, or excuse me, with the new coach and, and yeah. the deposit campaign, right? Mm -hmm. That video was so impactful, even as, you know, casual fan, right? I didn't go to Notre Dame or anything. I was like, damn, that's really impressive. And, mm -hmm. and it turned into, I think, a really good campaign for you guys. Yeah, um, I think for we'll the first- We'll speak to these a little bit. Yeah, no, go ahead. 
No, I was going to say for the first time in Notre Dame history, our fan base was united. So <laughs> we definitely <laughs> took advantage of that. There you go. There yeah. we go. Mm-hmm. Um, one more piece um, directly to you. And obviously we're going to come back to everybody here shortly, but um, can you speak to, I know we've done some flash shows with you guys. We've done the black Fridays. We, we're doing the blue and gold game, which spring game for, for those out there. Can you speak to kind of how and why and, and the results you've seen out of those specific campaigns and why you think FIBO was a, a big part of that? Yeah, especially our Black Friday sale. We had our, our best numbers yet this year in a, in a season that we, our attendance number was historically down. So um, the ability to, to market a link that has other sports. So we were hitting men's basketball fans who would open up. They'd see the men's basketball games, but after two or three, we switched to women's or hockey and vice versa, depending on whichever fans we were targeting. So they had the opportunity to say, all right, I'll go to a few men's games and like, let, me, let, let us check out a women's game on a Sunday. So we were seeing fans adding multiple sports to their cart because it was all on the same page. And I think one of the best parts, and Emily touched on this a little bit, is the ability to create a page with more information than just buy the tickets. So whether it's the clear bag policy or some catchy copy or whatever it is that you're trying to convey, you can put that on there. You can add videos and, and just make the buying experience more personal, um, which I think our fans love. And I personally love as a little bit of a creative mind. Um, and, and to be honest, being in that marketing position that I am, I'm not doing the back end stuff in the ticket office. So FIBO allows me to, after our ticket office sets it up, I can go in and change and we say like make pretty, <laughs> whatever it is that they've done. And it just allows things, I think, especially when you're short staff a little bit, you can do more and you don't have to wait on other people to get things done. Yeah, I, I, mean, I love the way you guys go about it, right? Where, where John or Alicia or whoever, somebody on the operational side is putting something in there and then they're saying, all right, boom, ready for you, right? Um, I think more teams mm-hmm. probably should, could do a better job of that where they're saying like, let's get the people who are experts at X do X and the people experts at Y do Y well, with the logins and be able to create across the, the you guys do a tremendous job of it. So, so well done on all that. Um, all right, Jason, my man, you are up. Um, you know, from the jump, you guys have really, really gotten creative, right? You've gone outside the box a ton. I mean, we're certainly selling tickets, of course, with you guys, but um, I think maybe more than any team, um, at least in my, my purview, um, you guys have gotten super, super creative. Can you speak to, I know we talked about before this, a ton of them, but can you speak to kind of, um, not just what you've done, but a little bit of how, you know, how and why and, and the, the, the method behind the madness there related to a lot of stuff you've done. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, the thing that I, I really enjoy about, you know, using FIVO is some flexibility to do some stuff you maybe not be able to do in the past. And, and you know, I think when COVID hit, we all knew right away, okay, we're going to have to generate revenues in some ways maybe we haven't used before. So our, our first thing we did was kind of a Meals for Heroes, <clears throat> excuse me, where we uh, had our fans donate meals for local healthcare workers in the area. We used FIVO as a platform. FIVO waived all the fees and made it very much or close to all the fees that they could uh, just to make it so it was a very, uh, you know, philanthropic gift and people felt like they were getting their money where they wanted it to go, which was a great you know, opportunity at that time for us and to help us get out the word. And we ended up getting uh, close to 2000 meals donated and it was a huge boost, but our fans were excited about it. We were excited about it and it was a great community outreach. But, you know, then we started looking, okay, knowing we're not going to have our traditional, you know, fans in the seat this year, what sort of things can we use FIVO for? Uh, We use them for, you know, the word I said I would never want to say again, cutouts, but the cardboard cutouts and all of those, uh, hopefully we never have to use those again, but that was a great method for that. Then going through the season, we had... We went to a bowl game and it was very limited attendance and it was, you know, during another peak uh, spike of COVID and we didn't have a lot of fans going, but we thought, okay, how can we get, you know, everybody still excited and drive some uh, revenue. And so we created a commemorative bowl package 
that included a bowl t-shirt, a, a commemorative ticket, and a poster signed by the coach. And we sold through our allotment of t-shirts and uh, had to order another through the bookstore. And that was a great revenue generator and it got people engaged and it was pretty awesome from that standpoint. Uh, then going last year, graduation, we had very limited uh, seating for graduation. Each student could only have four seats. And, you know, we set up a gate uh, where each student email allowed them to get four seats and they could claim those and then get them to their family. But it worked great as, you know, it wasn't a revenue generator, but it was something where campus and us, you know, being an athletic facility, we're like, how are we going to get through this? Went to Aaron and Fivo, and they really helped us through it and made it simple, made it very clear. And the messaging once you got your ticket was also great. So I thought that was a good use of it. Um, and then, you know, since COVID, we've really tried to continue doing some of these, you know, this year, having some more fans back in back in the building, you know, obviously we want butts and seats, but how can we add on to that a little bit? So we did this Legends Day package, you know, where you can get it, tickets to the game, but you can also get a t-shirt, a retro t-shirt, adding on to that. That was pretty successful. We found a lot of opportunities like that throughout the year. Um, we're doing a bark in the park for softball where we have some doggy bandanas. And if you uh, buy a ticket at regular price, it's not a group price, but you buy it at regular price, you get a bandana when you walk up and show that certificate. We're setting that up right now. So a lot of ways to kind of combo packages and you know, take all of our verticals and try to make sure we're getting the most out of them from a attendance revenue. And then licensing is obviously gonna be important since I'm so involved in that. Uh, so had a lot of opportunities like that. And then, high, you know, stuff that we wouldn't normally do high school football we've hosted in the past. And, you know, that's a 90% walk up and kind of a logistical nightmare. We were able to instead get that online and get the data, which the data is huge because we're trying to skew younger. And that's a lot of people with, you know, kids and, and getting their information and being able to go back after them has been great. Uh, Tulsa has a program called Tulsa Remote, where uh, we pay, uh, we have a donor in town who will pay you $10,000 if you work remotely to move to Tulsa. And there's been a couple thousand people involved in that. And we thought, how can we get those people and their information? Because they're probably looking for a fan base. We set up a special with them, worked with them on a tailgate and got quite a few people, you know, who are new to town, who are looking for a team to come out to a game. So that data capture is also huge. So really trying to find a bunch of different ways to use all of our different options we have uh, to drive revenue, drive butts and seats and licensing revenue with Vivo. All right, so what's the housing market like in Tulsa? Because I could, I may be in the market is, right now. That's an, I work from home, so, you know. Second lowest in the country. Cleveland's one, Tulsa's two, Wichita's three. So uh, there was just a report coming out on that. And I've conquered two out of those three. There you go. Cleveland's next. Uh, but we'll, <laughs> uh, all right, we'll talk offline on that. But um, now I'm interested. Um, yeah, guys, I, I think there's a theme here, right? Like, make it super easy find better ways to capture data, and then how do we use that data, right? And, and um, Barb, you and Jason specifically, Emily as well, obviously. Um, I think we get this sense of like, okay, I've got this huge cloud of data, and then we are, we've already talked about, we don't have enough bodies and, and or people available. Like when we talk about data too, I think some of it's just super actionable, right? You said it, Jason, families are coming out. Well, why don't we hit them for a family four pack? Why don't we hit them on faith and family night? Why don't we hit them on scout day and youth sports day, right? That's not difficult data. It's just, it's just more common sense. I think sometimes when we talk data, it scares people away. But I think from my perspective, anyway, just use the stuff you have. Like it doesn't have to be some crazy data. If you have, you know, a BI, a business intelligence job, great. If you don't, it doesn't mean you can't use your data and collecting more of it's always super valuable. Um, cool guys. So questions um and everybody out there please uh feel free to submit as any questions you have um we've had a couple come through i'll ask this one 
probably just for the for the panel and um you guys can all take a crack at it or one or two whoever um industry trends right like we've all seen a bunch of people go to mobile that's pretty clear um and i think the traditional ticketing platforms or you know have, have pushed that really well um covid probably accelerated that even more but what do you guys see as kind of the next, and it, it can be related to mobile, what do you guys see as kind of the next trend or what, what is the next thing that you want to do that you can accomplish, whether that's through FIVO or not, but like, what's your next piece to say, all right, this is how we get to our revenue goals or, or surpass those. Um, whoever wants to take that from the start would be awesome. Jason, I'm going to pick on you, take it. You know, on my end, and obviously I keep kind of going back to this, but it's how can you align, you know, your revenue streams in the best way possible from a, okay, you know, I'll use this football uh, season, upcoming season for an example, we're, we're starting talking team games and those sort of things. So how for every football game, can we set up a ticket, but also set up a, for military appreciation weekend, set up a camo shirt or a camo hat to go with that. And, you know, it takes a lot of uh, work with uh, licensing partners and your bookstore to do that on the front end. But once you have a system kind of going, it, it gets a little easier and a little easier before long it's second hand. So just trying to find a way to okay, how can we take this, add this to it? So if somebody just wants to come to the game, here's a ticket. But if somebody wants to come to the game and we can sell a shirt, so much better. How can we, you know, drive those things together? So that's that's what I continue to look at. Yeah, I think, I think right, like commonalities among consumers would be my answer too. I mean, I think, look, if it's military day, I'm coming out, I'm very likely to want to purchase it. I think the pro side has probably done a better job of that historically. Not necessarily just through FIBO, but in general. Um, but in the college world, the same thing, right? Like, if I look at X, I'm likely to do Y. I mean, Barb, you touched on it too on the Black Friday thing, right? Like, being able to surface multiple sports or multiple teams. So we have a ton of pro teams in college teams too who are doing team nights, right? And you've got your pride night, you've got your uh, university night, you've got your military, whatever. Um, well, I might belong to one of those groups, but my neighbor might belong to another one, or my kid might be a Star Wars fan and come out for that. So I think, I guess my answer would be that, right? Putting in front of people the option that you think would relate to what they'd want to buy. And I think our platform does the best job of that um, out there, right? Um, another one, and Barb, this kind of comes back to you, I think is the way it was asked, so I'm, I, I would assume, but um, you kind of touched on, like, we, we both did, I guess, to a degree, but somebody's building the offer and then you're coming in and doing them the marketing side mm -hmm. um can you explain that for, I, it's it's somewhat simplistic i think but basically yeah. like what does that look like like how how do you guys dictate that you you work together i guess to determine the what you want to offer and then somebody builds it and then you you add yeah. the dollar essentially right so mostly if it's coming out usually comes out of a meeting or we have x amount of tickets to sell and there's a new theme or something um, and, and honestly, after the pandemic, we've all, we've realigned our whole department and things are changing. So we have a fan engagement area and we're still building up staff. So there's limited resources in that, but we have the fan engagement, the revenue marketing, and then we just hired a sales team and then our ticket office as well. Um, so if we decide like, okay, let's, let's do blue goal game, for example, um, I'll put together a content, content marketing plan and dates and times and all that stuff. And if there's, um, different work at the sales team with different groups that they're going after, and then it's like, okay, we'll need, let's say it's three FIVO pages or three FIVO offers, something along those lines, tell the ticket office what it is. Uh, they set it up and if they need help, they reach out to AP. Uh, and then they usually slack me or G chat and say, Hey, offer is done. And they just basically slide in and like a big logo on everything. So they don't have to worry about the images, the, the co ad copy or anything like that. And then once it's done, I just go in in the back end and I add whatever marketing type materials I'll add in graphics. I'll make, I, I, I literally, I, I call it, I'll make it pretty now. So, um, we'll add in a video, I'll work with our fighting Irish media team add in a video, have some, um, and a lot of times they're not specific videos for the offer. 
I just look and see what's already on social, what's already performing well. And I'm like, Hey, this might attract some people to a game. So I'll throw that in like the second or third slide. Um, I'll add in a graphic or if I don't have a graphic, we didn't have a graphic designer for a while. Like I'll just add a photo and then we'll add in whatever text we want, depending on the group that it's being sent to. And I'll even update it if we have ads running and we want to change the creative, I just go in and make those changes without having to bother the ticket office other than the back end stuff. Or I'll bother Aaron. <laughs> Never a bother, bro. Never a bother. Uh, you're going to love, I don't think I've even shown you this. Um, and maybe some people on the call have seen it, but the new platform has kind of an auto play behind the screen. It's really, really cool. So the video feature has gotten even even more impressive. I think much more impactful even than the, than the previous. So it's, mm -hmm. it's really, really cool. Um, we're excited. And I think, you know, credit to you guys and many people on this call, right? Our goal at FIVO is to build to what you want, right? Like you guys mm -hmm. know your own fans best and hopefully you guys on the panel have felt that. Um, all right, one more that came in, Emily, um, I, this kind of relates to you and back to um, sort of touching on, you said you did a high school track, things like that. So um, you touched on this, but, but related to that, um, marketing actually it's got family week in there too so we'll, we'll double we'll double team the question um from marketing perspective it's i think what you'd said and, and you feel free to expand on this but basically you were kind of like yeah we put it out there on the tracks website but then you also kind of had qr codes around the track facility is that yeah fair to say? so yeah. we had some little um, like yard signs posted around the track facility um because we didn't know how many people were actually going to show up we i mean if you been in Kentucky anytime from January to April, May, you don't know if it's going to be snowing or 70. So no. we never know what people are going to show up for those track meets. Um, and so we had stuff posted on the track website and it's not even the website, our website, it's, it's just a high school track meet website. Yeah. And then we also posted stuff around the facility. And then when people walked up, we had one of our staffers there and he had it some cash there with them to take some if we had anybody that walked up with cash only but he also had a qr code on the table and said you know if somebody wants to buy you just use your camera shoot this and then you can go online show me you bought it and i'll give you your, your wristbands and you can get in and so we're i mean this is at a facility that doesn't have the capabilities to scan and i talked with you and i talked with doug a little bit about like what other people are doing how can we make this work because we just don't feel like it's the best thing to have, you know, five, ten thousand dollars in cash just sitting there with somebody behind a table. Um, and so we were trying to figure out a better way to make that a little bit safer for our staff, but also a little bit easier for people too. And we had a good number of people that before they even got to the door or got to the table, they had already stood outside, scanned it on the door, walked in, and they just showed us the receipt immediately that they purchased it. And that worked great for us. Um, definitely something that we'll, we'll continue to repeat at those facilities that we don't have the ability to scan, but that we don't want to just take cash out all the time. Yeah, I, I think you nailed it, right? The, the big piece too, and I think all of you guys have done this in other teams too, but like little leagues, right? You can put that link on a little league page. You can put it on a fundraising page. So we have tons of teams reaching out to PTO groups and things like that. Like how do you fundraise for X, Y, or Z, and, you know, Kentucky basketball, Kentucky football, Tulsa football, Notre Dame, whatever, any of these sports, right, are a much, as a person with little kids, are a much more attractive fundraising option than some of the others. Uh, Jason had a new question come in for you. Um, on your high school football night, how do you go about getting the word out, and were there any comp tickets involved with the high school players? Um, go ahead, sir. Yeah, well, the comp ticket's a great question. I'll be honest, I did not get that into the weeds on that side of it. Our, our ticket ops team did. But, you know, as far as getting the word out, I think uh, we just worked with those high school, the two local high schools who were coming in. We already have a bit of relationship with them because they're in town here, but said, hey, you know, tell your people if they don't want to stand in line, you know, use this link, use this deal to get those tickets and get them in the door and I think they were happy to send that out and spread the word and then you know on our side it was a win-win for Medata and not having such you know having so many ticket sellers there and having such long lines and those kind of things so uh it really was just communicating with uh the two teams that were coming in and, and letting them know hey this will save everybody some time and headaches and heartaches so 
Yeah, I can speak to that just from other teams that we've seen doing it too, right? Where they'll they'll basically reach out to the booster clubs and the parent, and, you know, reach out and say, "Hey, who's the best contact as a family member of the team?" And it just blows up from there, right? You can reach with administrators, et cetera. Um, you know, in some cases, there's casual high school football fans who will come out, but oftentimes it starts with the you know the two teams or organizations coming in. Um, we've seen it at, at a lot of different schools, whether that's just a big game rivalry game that's played in the larger stadium or, you know, playoff games, state championships, et cetera. We host those or we help ticket for those all, all over the place. Yeah. And Tulsa high school football, it, it's a lot like, uh, in a lot of ways, it's a lot like Texas high school football. It's, you know, you know, 10, 15,000 people at a game. So if you get it in their athletic department's hands, they're going to take it and run with it because they know who they're normal ticket holders are and they're selling season tickets as well so it's uh it, it from that standpoint you know if i back if i'm back in Greeley, it might have been a little bit harder but uh here it makes it a little easier yeah yeah i mean i think too the ability to say like all right hey this team is going to be on the east side and this team be on the west side or whatever like doing that in advance and not having to walk up and like well actually you need to walk all the way around the stadium to your team's side if you want to sit over there and it's becoming a cluster so uh, you know, there's value ahead of time for all of that stuff. Um, and then Emily, okay, last one, I think, because I know we're kind of running tight on time. Um, family weekend, again, related to the conversation that you had, and I, we touched on, like, putting it on their website. Was there anything else, can, and it sounds like you guys have a good relationship there, anything else, like, talking points that you said, hey, this is really the reason and how and why, um, and, and, you know, what resonated with them? I think there's I'm assuming this person's question relates to like, hey, they've had difficulty having that conversation and having it go the way they would like. Yeah, we um, we have a good relationship with the Dina students. So that helps us. We also ask that they be at most of our games for football and basketball if there's any disciplinary actions that need to happen. Um, so having a good relationship with them and then in turn having a good relationship with people in the parent association is helpful. Um, even still, sometimes I kind of have to prod them a little bit to get stuff out there. Uh, but once we get it going, then, then they're pretty good. It helps always to have a game time for any of your family weekend stuff. We usually try to schedule our family weekend pretty early on in the season. So it's one of those first couple of games that we have a time for. Um, because we know that if, parent, if we're going to put the tickets on sale in July, that parents want to know when they're coming in. They want to know what time that game is because they also want to know what else they can plan that day. And campus wants to know too. Um, usually on the parent association page and on the family weekend page that campus has, they have five, six, seven different events that they have um, that people are doing tickets for, but they make sure and put ours on there as well so that people can buy that football ticket because they know that's, that's really the essential thing that people are coming in for. That's the big event that they want to go to. But then we also take their information that they post on their site, we copy it over, we post it on our page, and then we direct our parents to them. So if somebody happens to land on our page, we're directing them over to the Family Weekends page. Um, and that way they're getting more consistent information from those people on campus, but then all of our information is still staying the same. And we update inventory as needed in there. Several times this past season we had we put inventory out there, we put a couple thousand tickets out and then we realized that they're selling out. So had to go add stuff and that makes it a lot easier too. Um, and that way we can kind of fill in the areas that we want to have filled in for TV for those games, especially if they're non-conference games and that makes it an easy thing for us. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think you really, all really, really good points. Um, the timing one is tough, right? Um, you want to base it on opponent or, or inventory and it's dependent, but I think when you got it, you got the opportunity to do it early. It makes sense. All right. We should have another one come in. So, um, it might be you again, Emily, but anybody who wants to answer this and I can, I can speak to it too, but assume you're all delivering mobile tickets. Are you primarily sending mobile PDFs or QR codes or utilizing NFC tickets to encourage further ticket transfer and, and data collection? Um, probably across the board, I think Jason and Barb, you guys are using mobile QR codes, I think. Emily, I don't know yeah. if you guys are you guys using QR. NFC. Yeah. Okay. I can speak to the functionality we can do NFC. It's totally, I mean, it's it's within, with, I think with every provider um, or, or, you know, uh, traditional ticketing platform or, or primary platform. Um, 
it's, it's about communication, right? I think to, in my eyes, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong, Barb, you, you do tons of communication, Jason, you too. Like just making sure people understand what they're gathering, right? Especially if you get a lot of new buyers, which is what we're trying to help bring you. Um, make sure they understand exactly what they need to do, whether it's NFC, mobile PDF, QR code. Um, you know, I, I think the biggest key is just making sure they know how, what, where, and what to do. Because this is not meant as a shot at this group, but like your ticket scanners, that's not their job, right? They're not there for that. They, they, they're there temporarily. It's, their, it's maybe their second job, third job. They're just there on the weekend. Take it out of their hands. Let them be greeting and help and welcoming and thank you as opposed to being, oh, I don't really know how to solve this. And they're going to bring them to the box office and come into to difficult times. But um, yeah, we have a lot of teams doing it at NFC. It doesn't sound like anybody on the call specifically, but um, I think it's up to you. You know, how, how are you, what do your scanners look like? How, what's your base, what's your, what's your range, et cetera. Um, but yeah, to me, and tell me if I'm wrong guys, but I think it's the most important thing is communication. You all kind of hit on this where we have that ability to really customize and communicate, clear back policy, how to scan your tickets, where to pick up an item, right? Um, whatever that is. And I think making sure that that's very prominent is, is, is the biggest key. But guys, I um, think we are up on time. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for uh, jumping on. Thanks everybody for, for the questions and for, for sticking around. Um, really enjoyed the conversation. We'll. Uh, be in touch soon, guys. Um, please, please reach out to your car, uh, partner success rep. Um, if you don't know who that is, you can reach out to me, just a Paris at FIVA.com. We'll get you plugged in. Um, but would love to discuss what we talked about today. Uh, uh oh, one more chat question. Oh, here we go. Uh, we'll be sitting around. Yeah, see, we'll be sitting around the recordings. Uh, but thank you guys so much for the time today. Um, have a great uh, afternoon. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, guys.